Yay Networks. Welcome back to Bees In with Brit. On this episode, we are talking to one of the most dynamic duos, the Fittish Podcast co-hosts. Jenna and Francisco. We're going to be reading their birth charts. They're going to ask some tarot questions. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, then let's get into it a little bit, right? Get into it. Yes. Okay. So- I'm going to let you lead because I have no idea what I'm about to find yeah. out about us. I'm excited. Yay. And worried. I have Fran's birth chart on my phone. That's okay. why I keep looking at this uh, because we did get an update on your birth time, which <gasps> changed a lot of things. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes. So I said error. I meant fire. You called because- my mom to ask her? Yes. Or- your mom uh, had yeah. Chat. She was like, please do it. No. Um, so what's interesting with you guys is that just right off the bat, Francisco has a lot of Sagittarius energy. So that's fire. That is somebody who is an adventurer, someone who does not like to stay in one place. So, like, and I love listening to the podcast. So recipe. your birth charts were dead on. Yeah. And then Jenna, you actually have so much earth. You are very grounded. You have a sun in Taurus, a Taurus rising and your moon in Virgo. So, so what you, does that mean? Earth, earth, earth. You were like, I am here. This is like, you love to have things to where you know what's going on. Like you need to feel safe and secure. Stability. Francisco needs to feel freedom or else he just like gets bored with life. So it's not about you it's two. Pretty accurate, actually. It's about what you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you guys can give that to each other. That's the fun thing about understanding your birth chart. Tight. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no. exactly. You need to loosen the leash. That's what you need to do. One of those that's like uh, retractable. retractable. Yeah. You got yourself Give into this lead. situation. I've been very clear about who I am out of the gate. I'm grounded. <laughs> I'm earthy. Grounded, earthy. Look exactly. how grounded and earthy I look. It's in my profile. It is. It's my long gold nails. I'm yeah. so grounded and earthy. <laughs> but in Francisco's defense, I will say he does have Sagittarius rising. So Francisco, you're they call it the big three in astrology. So your rising is how you like come off to people when they first meet you. You're Sagittarius rising. So like when you first meet him, you kind of get that adventurous spirit. That's probably why you guys had so much fun together. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you get to know him better. His son's in Sagittarius, but his moon is also in Virgo. So y'all have the same like real needs. Like your moons are the same. So that means once we get past all this outer stuff, if the intimacy is right, I mean, it's just, it's perfect. It's like precious. Two Virgo moons. What is intimacy? We haven't been We're going to get there. We're going to, the stars are going to help us. Like, we're fucked. <laughs> no, you're not. I thought it would be fun if you wanted to like ask some questions and I could look in the stars to see. Like, yeah. are there any okay. things that you guys have been struggling with? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah. Be honest. What would you, what would you like to know about our relationship? You know what we struggle with the most, I'll say, because, well, it's what I feel, is we struggle with communication. With communication. For sure. I mean, that's kind of always, for me, the root of our issues. Yeah. I know it's a broad thing to say, but it's like, hello? I'm always like, talk to me. Are you in there? That's a fact. We struggle with We struggle with communication. We have different communication needs. Well, what's (laughs) what's interesting about that is you guys actually have very compatible communication placements. Really? So So, Jenna's like, "Mm mm-mm. So you're you She knows I'm cynical. I'm like, "Mm, okay, I'll let you read your paper. I'm a Virgo, so I'm like, no, no, no. (laughs) Trust me, I get it. Um, So your Mercury sign is like how you know your communication style, how you speak to other people, how you process information. So Francisco, yours is in, of course, Sagittarius. You have so many Sagittarius placements. It's insane. I've never even seen this many in one chart. Um, and Jenna, and is he a Sagittarius? Yes. Yeah, 100%. Yes. So you are a Sagittarius, he's but like, you're also like, I don't know all this Jenna, moon like stuff. all Sag. Oh, okay. All that, like across the board. So you really do need freedom. And uh, anyway, back to the Mercury. So Jenna, you have your Mercury in Aries, which means that you are very direct. When you want something, Aries is the leader of the Zodiac. Man, this the is first spot sign. Spot on. Yeah. And it's very fiery. And Francisco... Sagittarius is also very fiery, but what happens, I think, with you guys is you'll kind of go along with what Jenna's saying in the moment because you want to get along. And then because you're a Sagittarius, you you kind of like, you're like, oh, I can't really do it. So you try to kind of <laughs> do your own thing without upsetting her. I paid her. She, yeah, I paid her to have my back before coming into today. No, but she's spot on on that. No, you are spot on. It's good because I always tell him, I go, I am super direct, you know, because sometimes he'll be like, I think you're being passive aggressive. I go, no, 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 no. Like, I'm not. I'm never that way. Even with female friends, I've always been that way, probably because I was an only child that I don't like to let things fester, you know? Right. I mean, I can bite my tongue if it's not worth it and like choose my battles, but For sure. if I don't like something, I like to be direct because I think it yeah. ends up in a bad place. I tend to do that. I'm just like, hey, I don't like that or I need more help around the house. You know, your mom's mm-hmm. like, 
like, mm-hmm. tell him what you want done. I'm like, I do. I do. Take out the trash. Going. He's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did. I think I might have agreed to do that. I'm like, yeah. It's the sleepiness pick. He is really tired. I think that's what's really hard on the relationship right now, you know, is like the I get like no attention right now because he's so into Remy. And then I definitely know that I I didn't know I needed more attention from him. Right. I went from getting a lot of attention Mm -hmm. and kind of romantic attention from him. And then we have a baby and it's like I don't exist, you know, like I'll talk to him and he's talking to Remy like literally in the moment. I'm like, okay, that was a good talk. I'm going to go to bed. See ya. You know, and it's great because he's a great yeah. dad, but I think having right, a baby. You want that, but you also have your own separate needs, right? Yeah. As yeah. a woman. Mm-hmm. So for you with a Virgo moon, uh, what's interesting is Virgos come across as like very self-sufficient, which I think you do. Um, but they also have this very soft center and they need to get as much as they give. Mm-hmm. And also Virgos hate asking for help. They hate being the one because they're just used to being the one to do things. They're more comfortable giving than getting. Mm -hmm. So with you guys, that's something that I think would be really helpful, especially because Sagittarians are very generous. Like if you know what someone needs, you'll give it to them. Mm -hmm. It's when you feel like you're failing that you kind of don't know what to do. And I think that's where it falls apart, especially like Sagittarius is an optimistic sign. So like if you don't get the praise, if you're not Um, happy, you are. Yeah, they are. I can, no, I'm a sure. realist. I, I always and say I'm a grounded. realist. Mm-hmm. And he's like, everything's amazing. And I'm like, no, I mean, it's not really. But but it yeah. would be pretty amazing how much you guys would be able to get more, I don't know, get more out of the intimacy if you could just make that little tweak of like you asking for what you need and you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know. I see. She I paid. see so the missing is now. I see. So I'm asking. It's just you I'm doing a, it. It's as simple as it. that. You just got to do it. And then find your mind. I thought it was all to be hard. Sagittarius, you know. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. So how, when people, um, when people want to know this about themselves, yeah. like where is this resource? How can they kind of look into themselves and their partner and figure this mm-hmm. out? Yeah. Well, there are so many good books out there, but yeah. if you want something quick, you want to just like get your charts. I really like a website called astrocharts.com because you get a free reading and you can just kind of start looking into like, okay, what does it mean that my son's in Taurus? What does it mean? And it's pretty amazing like how dead on it is. And then you can see like your blind spots or where you could even understand a friend or a partner and see, you know, how can I be better for them? I love, she says blind spots and I'm like flaws and weaknesses. What are our flaws and weaknesses? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, that's more, I, I think we learn more about our flaws and weaknesses. You're getting in dark ground right now. <laughs> it's okay. I'm a Scorpio moon. We can go into it. Uh, we can get dark. So let's talk about the wounded warrior in everyone's chart. We all have one. That's the place where you have like your biggest struggles, but once you, it's your blind spot, but once you overcome it, you can actually become really, really good in that area. Okay. So you guys have the same exact Chiron placement of Gemini. So I think that's why right now, as your relationship is relatively young, you're probably having that communication issue because Gemini rules communication. So as you guys continue to evolve, you can actually become really great communicators with one another. Mm. But I think you're in kind of a, a spot where you're figuring out the weaknesses. So People with a Gemini Chiron can either shut down and not communicate because typically something in childhood has gone on to where they used to communicate their feelings and then they didn't receive mm-hmm. validation. Mm-hmm. I have my, I have that Chiron placement too, by the way. And then because they didn't receive that, something about them shuts down. And when they communicate, they communicate from their head and not their heart. So as they get older and try to have intimate relationships, they don't really know how to communicate head and heart. Mm-hmm. So um, what can be really helpful for that is to just, instead of saying what you think, saying exactly what you feel Mm -hmm. and not being afraid to be rejected or embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Because once you do that, you realize, hey, I'm actually really good at that. My relationships actually are improving. So that's kind of the the thing with that. Does that make sense or resonate with you guys? I'm hearing you need to talk more about your feelings. Absolutely. (laughs) Oh, I will. I will start opening up. I feel. Yeah, he does. I think, isn't that just, maybe it's as you get older too and you're married, right? Yeah, yeah. As you get older, you're like, wait, are they all the, kind of the same? I mean, are all men kind of the same? It's so funny because in certain well, ways, uh, I think Mark. in certain ways, yeah. Like, I mean, men, 
you know, you guys, not to generalize, yeah. all men are different, but yeah. I feel like women are typically more emotional and will be like, sure. I need this, I need this. And men like to look at the big picture and like, wait, um, this is working. Like everything's fine. Why do we have to talk about that again? I just feel like women are more emotion. Men are more yeah. like action. Kind of talk Get it out. It mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk whenever something changes, you know, when, mm -hmm. when, when things start moving around. But we always run that subject off. Does your husband leave all the kitchen cabinets open? No, but we do have issues with the dishes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I just saw, you know how sometimes you feel like women like speak to each other? Like I saw a college girlfriend post something the other day. Poor Francisco. Like it was like an, a tribute for her husband's 40th birthday and they have a great relationship and I've known her since college and him. They met in college. So they get along very well, but her and we don't even keep in touch really, but like her Instagram post was hilarious because as I'm sitting there and Fran and I are probably like, you know, I'm looking at the kitchen, like mm -hmm. cleaning her post to him is like, I just could not imagine, you know, my life without you, you know, you can never find the dishwasher. Like you don't know where it oh is. God. Like all the cabinets are open. And I'm thinking like, they're all the same. They're all related, you know, and he lives in San Francisco. That's so funny. No, I'm just You're giving you a hard time. It's a thing. It is funny though, thing. you know, cause I think it's just the, it is, it's just, um, it's learning like the things that it's okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I try and look at it in a way from a relationship is like, you, Things like that never used to bother me. I right. don't know why it bothers me more now. Maybe it's when you ask for them to do something and they still are like resistant or they mm -hmm. just don't, you know? But then I tell myself, you know, and I'm almost 40 at this point. So it's like, and he's such a great dad that I'm like, you know what? If, if the cabinets are open, it's really okay. Right. And it's I, a little creepy like at night, but when, when the I cabinets are they're all open, but it's okay. <laughs> Who was here? It's not harming anyone. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Oh. And I, it most likely it was all me that opened all those cabinets. Well, who else would it be? Remy? I'm pretty sure Remy wasn't either. Yeah, it wasn't Remy. Yeah. 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 Oh, see, this is what he does. He tries to gaslight me like okay. it's me leaving the cabinets open. Oh, my I'm gosh. Like, no, no. It may be, we might have a ghost. Yeah, that's possible. That actually yeah. could be true. I mean, who knows? On another episode, ghost hunting at your house. Yeah, that'll see. be fun. <laughs> All right. Are we supposed to ask you more questions? Yes. So if you guys have any other like specific questions or I can go into like your love languages, things like that. I've got it all here. So yeah. It's just kind of like we what you want to like everything yeah, you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. I think everything. I don't even know exactly what to ask about okay. us. It's kind of hard to be objective about something. Well, I can get so into not. it then. And then you can just kind of ask yeah, as, as we reveal because things. I feel like Brand, I feel like every love language is his love language, which is okay. really can be overwhelming and like, it's hard, right? Because I know a lot about the love languages and looking at him and he, he tends to do a lot of them. And, uh, but I know we always, it's funny with us. And I notice it a lot is that, and I think most people are this way maybe, but they, you do the love language for the other person that you want back. For sure. You exactly. Know? Yeah. You like you give what you want to get, hoping that yeah. you'll get back what you're wanting. And they're like, what are you even doing? Like, yeah, I'm a words of affirmation person or whatever. Right. Exactly. Do you know what your love languages are? Like your main ones? It's hard for with me with Bram because I when I, I'm not kidding when I say you do everything. I mean, every love language, I feel like, is your love language. What do you think is your biggest I think one? It all depends what's what I'm in the mood for. But that's what I mean. You so do all of them. <laughs> He's I would say. I don't think gifts is your big love language, but I think words of affirmation for sure. That sounds more like a complaint, though. No, 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 no. That's one of the gifts. It's gifts. It's acts of service. It's what? Physical touch, words of affirmation. And what's the other one? Time. Quality time. Quality time. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Um, so, oh, I definitely think acts of service. I definitely think words of affirmation. It used to be physical touch, but now like <laughs> we don't touch each other. Like we have not, we've, we're, we're lacking in the intimacy right now. We don't even sleep in the same room right now. He's been sleeping with the baby. So like, it's been, you know. Well, and that's um, tough too. Like my husband had a surgery and we were sleeping in different rooms and I noticed we were like arguing a lot more. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I really think it makes a difference if you don't sleep in the same bed. Yeah. Like that was kind of a revelation that we had. I think so too. A, yeah. Because whether you're like always having sex every night or not, I think or sleeping in the same bed and having the touch and the intimacy mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah. And so like we haven't had like any of that, you yeah. know what I mean? And like, I don't know what weeks I feel like, I mean, we haven't slept in the same bed in a long time. Or slept. Or, sl or, or slept. slept. He hasn't slept. Maybe tonight you make the change. <laughs> I think my, Ooh, yeah. Okay. I've tried. Well, maybe when we move. <laughs> it's just, we're not doing this because we're not getting along. It's just kind of our situation where we live. It's a big life change and you guys have, we're, you know, we're, yeah. we're going to move out soon, but like sure. the, um, we only have two bedrooms. And so Remy sleeps downstairs and okay. we put, I put a bed in there 
But now he doesn't want to sleep in his crib. So him and Fran sleep in the bed down there together every night. And it's just too far from our bedroom, yeah. you know, to sleep all the way upstairs. And it's all the way in the bottom of the townhome. And so you know, we're just really doing it logistically More right now. Thing, but then, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully he'll be like in his own room and yeah, we can we're be together. seven months into it. So we're mm -hmm. really trying to figure out and navigate all the fronts of being a parent and how to balance a life as a dad as a partner, mm -hmm. for sure. as a human, as a friend. Yeah. It's I not think, an easy thing. Sleepwalker. And I know we're talking mm -hmm. about love languages. Mine is um, time, gifts, right? What do you think? Those. For Those? Sure. Yeah, time and gifts. Do you want to ask some questions? Should we turn to the cards and let's get turn into to the, the cards. future? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's uh, look to the future. Kind of scary. Yeah. Don't be scared. Nothing bad will come out. I don't do like negative readings. I really? Just, yeah. No, I do like uh, positive, like anything uplifting, anything that you guys would need to like, know. Like have a mold up here. Is it <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. That's above my pay grade. I can't do that one. Go to your doctor, okay? <laughs> do you? It's my no. advice. Because <laughs> I haven't seen anything in a while. Thing. Yeah. Do you have a mole oh you're concerned God. about? <laughs> no more. No. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. All right. So how do these cards work? So you can ask me really anything. Um, anything kind of open-ended, you can say like, what is the future of my business? What is coming next in our relationship? Do you have any advice for our relationship? What would make us happier? Like really anything. Okay. The sky's the limit. It's scary a little bit. Don't be scared. I promise I won't tell you anything negative. It's like, even if I if I don't even know if I believe in this stuff or not, but it's still, it's still scary. scary. You're gonna ask, what is the future it? of my business? Well, you're no. going to be retired. And yeah. it's <laughs> no, in a very no, positive no. way. You're going to retire like in two yeah, months. Well, and the thing is we have free will. So even if the cards <laughs> tell you something, you have to remember you're the one making those decisions. So you could change it. Like if something comes up and you're like, oh, this is the path I'm on. I actually don't like that outcome. Then you could change it. Let's talk about our relationship. Yeah. Like what's the future of our relationship? Yeah. Yes. I'm going to do a general relationship reading for you guys. Okay. And we'll see what comes out. Okay. Sounds like good. what does spirit, your higher selves, like what needs to come through for you guys? I'm okay. Set my microphone down for a second so I can okay. shuffle and do my thing. Oh, wow. That looks like a burning tower. It is a burning tower. <laughs> and then God. No. With a black cat. You don't know if goddess. It's a, some queen. Goddess. All right, let's start with this with this part of what we've already pulled here. So for Jenna, I was just like kind of doing this in my head because I didn't have this, but the card that represents Jenna is the tower card. So this tells us that there, and it's not bad. This just tells it's us. It's not bad. There, It's burning down. It's a card of like change. It's not bad. It's just fiery. It is a you're, burning, you're just it is a stoic, burning you're just leaning as tower. Stoic as a tower, <laughs> but fiery it's inside. It's not bad. I want to see how she spins the burning tower. I mean, there's like people jumping out of the windows. Okay. Oh my God. No. It's it's about change. So sometimes change comes softly, and sometimes change comes like this, like this card with the fire and the lightning. And you're a very passionate person, so mm -hmm. I, I think change would happen this way. So you're in a place right now where you're experiencing a lot of change mm -hmm. and that is impacting the relationship mm -hmm. and like the general feel of the relationship so change is what mainly represents ah. you right now and then francisco is the queen of wands so you are i'm the, the queen of wands i've been wondering this yeah. card represents uh Sagittarius in the deck, which is really funny. And we talked about all the Sagittarius placements you have. I'm going through a lot of change because um, you're about to tell me you want to be a woman. <laughs> there, well, hey, you never know. Francisco, you can just tell us now if that's... I know. Well, now that you've brought it up, my book job is... Francisca. It's tomorrow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, so the Queen of Wands energy is all about passion. So you're actually in a place, Francisco, where you're feeling very um, alive and like passionate about what's going on in your life. There's probably a lot of like exciting things yeah. happening for you. Like you just feel really fired up and in your element because this represents Sagittarius energy. So you're like- Look how pretty you are sitting on your- Look. You're feeling yourself. Look at my black puss. You're living your- Oh my God. <laughs> okay. And then the card <laughs> that- <laughs> I can't. Then the card that represents the energy that you guys are creating together right now, this uh -huh. middle card- that um, old lady. The old lady. So this is my Golden Girls tarot deck. So this is Sophia. Do you watch Golden oh, Girls? No. no. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. So anyway, this is the teacher card. So you guys are learning a lot of lessons together. Mm -hmm. That's what represents the overall energy. So all of this stuff that you guys are talking through, going through, exploring on the podcast, uh, you guys are learning together. This is like a really big time of growth for you guys spiritually. And it's really cool that you do it on the podcast because I think that people who are listening, 
who are in this space, you know, you guys are the teachers. So you're probably teaching, you know, inadvertently to other people as well. I mean, I think we do. I think a lot of the feedback we tend to get on the show from people, at least those of you that write us, because I know a lot of people listen and I like to think a lot of y'all listen and just don't say anything, you know, which is fine because that's probably how I would be as well. You know, I like never really leave reviews, but yeah, I. I'm going to leave a review, but I just, I listen every single One week. One star. I don't even, oh my God, no. I uh, hated it. Do Absolutely not recommend. <laughs> Do not I, recommend. Um, no, a lot of the feedback we we get is people tend to like the um, the kind of the honesty about the relationship because I do think that especially that first year of having a baby, like I said, and a lot of people that listen to the show are in that phase or have recently been in that phase or are looking in the near future to be in that phase. Yeah. And so I think that's the relatability that people appreciate because it's really hard to kind of share um, stuff that we don't get along about, you know, sure. but, but how can we not? It's real. And when we do a podcast every week and we're kind of in the heat of something that's been hurtful or, um, it's nice to share it because I just don't know. I mean, maybe some people, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have better relationships than we do, but um, I, I think a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people just deal and it's about recognizing like, wow, everyone has issues. You know yeah. what I mean? Everyone oh, I think issues. everybody totally has issues. My girlfriend's and I were laughing about our relationships last night at dinner. We were all just laughing about talking about the silly things that we fight about. And I really think it's universal. Like, I think, you know, maybe people don't share it with each other. So it's kind of nice to hear somebody else also goes through it. Yeah. You know, and um, if you talk to any therapist, I mean, you know, you've been to therapy too. They say this is just like a part of it. Mm -hmm. You're two separate people trying to create one life together. So there's going to be some ups and downs. It's just like whether there's really love there at the core or not. And so I think that's kind of what makes the difference, right? Is there? I don't know. Mm, There totally is. I can feel the love from this (laughs) chair. Like just, it's radiating off of these two. Yeah, it's different right now. It's different right now, but we'll we'll get there again. I just don't know how people pop out another kid right away. Oh, you just have to have it in you. Yeah. Like I've been half asleep in the past like three minutes. I don't know if you saw it. You were napping just now when we were talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like... (laughs) Okay, so we have the six of cups for you. This is a partnership, but it's also romantic. Is there any chance that you two would work together in some way? Yeah. We are. You are? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's going to become more prominent. Fran loves this shit. You see him? He's like eating it up. I want to see what my future has in store for me. We have the five of cups in the reverse next. <laughs> five of cups in, in the upright is like someone who is upset about something that went wrong in the reverse, this is getting over that feeling. So maybe there's something that, sorry, you guys have had like a setback of some sort and uh, you guys will be getting over that and working together will be part of what helps you guys get over it. We will find out. What'd you do? (laughs) A setback. (laughs) Like a disappointment of some sort. Okay, let's see. Let's get another one. Page of swords. Okay, be careful about people around you in your business life that are immature. A uh, page of swords, a page in the tarot is like the youngest card in the deck. So swords are the way we think and like how we kind of show up. So if there's anybody in your professional life that seems a little bit like shady or maybe they don't know what they're doing, be sure that you pay attention to that. And, you know, don't be afraid to like double check or like there, there's somebody around who's a little Could shady. Be. What I'm trying to say. Could, around my business or our business? Well, I got you guys as a couple like so it was like your business like whatever you guys are doing working together there could be someone around you that well there's someone shady shady. around us for sure i'm trying (laughs) to shake it off okay then we have the moon card and the moon card is all about trusting your instincts and your intuition so a lot of what you guys are going to be doing working together is going to require you to kind of go with your gut Uh, There will be some things that you'll be able to figure out with like based on numbers and facts and figures. And there will be some things where you're going to just have to really trust yourself and go for it. And the more you trust yourself, the less you worry about it, the more successful you guys will be. And I don't know if that's with real estate or with another business venture that you guys have. Um, You're just going to have to trust it and go with it. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it looks good. I mean, you guys are looking good. Um. (laughs) Something about our near future as a family. Okay. Near future as a family. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what the cards have to say. Will we find a house? Oh my gosh. Precious. Okay. Four of wands. This is the card of celebration. It's also (laughs) the marriage. It's also the marriage card. So. Uh Uh-oh. With each other? With each other. (laughs) Yes. So there's going to be a family celebration coming up. It could be a marriage. Could be a wedding. 
something that you guys will be celebrating though that has okay. to do with your family, Good. your You're marriage. Pregnant. <laughs> it, could, it could be a pregnancy. Could be. I don't know if Jenna would be celebrating, but t- the Ten of Wands is another thing that you guys have coming in the future as a family. So this is a burden worth having. This is doing a lot of work, but it is a burden worth having, which means that there's a reason you guys are doing it. You understand that reason and it's important. So the more you guys push through, you'll continue to have these celebratory aspects. Nice. But you guys are really working hard on things right now. I okay. think you're trying to build something. Mm-hmm. The sticks, it's like what we used to build. Okay. So you have a lot on your plates right now. So you have to give yourself grace for that. Okay. That let's seems see, accurate. Let's get another one. And then justice. Yeah. So as long as you guys continue to act ethically, this is like you give what you get kind of card. Also Libra energy. So Francisco, your Venus balance. and Mars, the balance. Okay, you and ethics. Like the That's first me. thing I think of. Yeah. Of course. Well, you have to stay ethical Gosh. and balanced is what this card means. So the more you guys do that, the more you give, the more you balance out your lives, um, the better things will be. So I think, yeah, focusing on the work-life balance because you guys do show up as a couple that works together, that builds together. Um, I think just making sure that you also have that romantic time. Maybe it's a monthly date night, you know, if you guys are busy or, um, but something that makes you feel grounded, I think, and that allows you enough time and freedom to not feel like you have to always, you know, be doing something specific. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but if you guys keep that balance, there's just so much goodness here. You guys have a lot of really good things coming. This was fun. Yeah. I like the yeah. positivity. I like it also, yeah. Yeah. A lot to look forward to. Last but not least, the Fool card. So this is the card of a new beginning and a fresh start. So the Fool card is like, look how happy she is. It's like, yeah, but she's a fool. But right? it, yes, yeah, she's a fool. But it's like, a, it's <laughs> like a, fool. it's like a metaphor. It's like happy like a fool. You know, yeah. isn't there a song that says yeah. like when you're happy sure. like a fool? That's like the advice here. It's like remember to not um, not think too much. Like look okay. at this part of your life as a fresh start. You guys are everything has changed. You are family, and so try to enjoy that and almost be like yeah, almost be like a fool. Like just look around, enjoy yourself, you just, you have just a good need time. To be like a fool. That's what I was saying. Mm-hmm. When you're upset, just be a just fool. Be like a fool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just let it go. When you don't know where I am, you can't take be it. Like a fool. <laughs> when I don't know where you are, yes. just <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. oh my God. just be a fool. Thank you guys so much for being here. This was so much fun getting to know you on a different level. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you very much. <laughs> I hope you learned more about us. I did. <laughs> I feel like when you know someone's birth chart, you can really you know get to know them a little yeah. bit better. Well, Where can people find you though and listen to your podcast? Fittish is so much fun. Great question. Yeah, Fittish the podcast, just as with your show, anywhere y'all download your podcast every week. We This episode will actually be on YouTube as well, but it's Fittish the podcast. And then we of course have an Instagram, but Fran and I have our own personal personal ones jenna page and francisco riso underscore it, yeah you don't have to put the accent in there really <laughs> <laughs> perfect and you guys don't forget to subscribe to the podcast be sure you hit that little plus sign and we will see you guys next tuesday